Evening, people. Evening. Your yeah, man, Atheon. Outside the box. You know what we do and why we do it. Like, subscribe, share. Got a few things to run by you, man. I want to talk real quickly and just give you a brief synopsis on all that's going on around us right now. Mr. Jacob Blake. Sad story. It troubles my heart. Uh, I hate to see what's happening around us. I hate to see what's happening to our, our inner city neighborhoods and our people, man. I, I am like, you know, I, I, I can't say enough. I'm saddened by it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why people are choosing to make life decisions based on somebody else's life decision. That's the scary part. Life decisions are being made based on somebody else's life decision. So... I'm going to say this. I'm going to start with this, and I'm probably going to end with this. This is going to be short and sweet and hopefully to the point enough for you to really grasp where I'm coming from. Uh, there's a simple biblical reason why this Jacob Blake was shot by the police. It's pretty clear. If you read the Bible and you're paying attention, uh, you'll see that there are some specific rules to play by this thing called life. There's specific ways to look at it, things that you can do and not do, things that you could say and not say. Many uh, Bible reading people, Bible reading Christians or non-Christians, you know, if you really read your word, you can read this for clarity. So I'm, I'm going to try to make some sense of what's going on around us, but I'm going to tell you the truth at the end of all of this, of the shooting. And uh, before I get to the scripture, I'm going to tell you, you know, some principles here. Um, you know, a pastor, a dear friend of mine just spoke to him yesterday. I'm not going to say his name, but he's, he has no idea. I'm even bringing this up. Uh, he may see this eventually, but I'm not going to really, he used to be a pastor, but now he's really just really, uh, pouring in other people's lives going around the, you know, the, the state the country, wherever, even abroad overseas, you know, just kind of speaking into people's lives, giving them perspective on leading life in a proper way. And, and uh, I really, I really love the guy, man. But he called me, you know, he hit me up just out of the blue yesterday and told me that he was working on some stuff, some projects. And he just said, you know, back in 2015, uh, when you talked to me, he said, I didn't really, I wasn't really following or tracking you all the way. He said, but I, I kind of get now what's going on. And he was talking about he had done his first police ride along. And uh, he knew that I was working in a patrol setting and been around some people and did some things and experienced some things on a patrol level. And so when he came to me, he said, in 2015, I didn't realize what you were coming from. Or I didn't really quite get it all, but I kind of get it now. So now I'm just going to tell you right now, man. Uh, many people do not research the things that's going on around us from a rational or biblical perspective. And they won't do this or they won't get this, what I'm about to tell you. But there's a lot of things happening around us. And the reason why we don't understand what's happening, the reason why we're making swift decisions on how we're going to respond to these situations is because we're not rooted and grounded in God's word. If we start reading, we will know that what you see happening today, just with this whole Jacob Blake situation, you won't make rash decisions when you're listening to the voice of God or when you're reading your word. You know, some, even Christians don't want to hear this, period. Some Christians don't even want to hear this. Uh, they only want to use God at their convenience. So when a person gets shot by the police officer or when a person gets shot in the community or when something happens that you don't quite understand or you're upset about it or you get bothered by it, you don't understand it. You get upset about it, but you don't go to God with it. We just respond. Um, I almost wish back to the days when the newspaper used to get thrown because at least it gives you 24 hours before you form an analysis. When you read the paper, then you can kind of form an analysis and information is constantly coming out. But today we live in the age of your phones and people will record things and post it immediately and then people will see it and think it's a, it's, it's, it's something that's, you know, it's sensationalism. So they repost, repost, repost. And then we have a bunch of people who go to the streets or take to the streets for something that they don't even understand what happened. They don't know what went on. So let me give you some perspective here. We got to get some perspective. And Christian people, my goodness, come on, y'all. We're supposed to be the perspective for people who don't get it. We're supposed to be the life of people and help them understand what's going on around us and why it's happening because we read our Bibles, right? But apparently we're not doing this because even Christians are responding right away without stopping, freezing up, asking God maybe what he thinks about this before they respond. So let's talk about Jacob Blake then. Let's just get on here for a minute. 
And I'm only doing this because I, I feel like the people need to know exactly what you're standing for. If you're going to stand for something, at least know what you're standing for. Um, don't just go out here and have cock go after people or go after a side or take a side without really knowing and understanding who these people are we're dealing with. So I want to give you some perspective. And Jacob Blake, <laughs> his rap sheet, his record, and whatever he was doing prior to this is of significance. And I can explain that to you at a at, at, at a significant time of this in this delivery here. Because in law enforcement, you need to understand something. You need to know who you're making contact with when you make contact with somebody. All law enforcement officers run into people all the time and they don't know who this person is from Adam. They don't trust the person just like the person doesn't trust you. The person doesn't trust you because he doesn't know you as a cop. A cop doesn't trust necessarily people on the street right away because you just met this person. So you got to find out who the individual is. Once you talk to your dispatcher and you find out who this person is and you get some information from the individual, then you can form an analysis on who this person is based on what you know. OK, now here's the deal with Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake had an active warrant that was issued on the 7th of July. That's facts. He had a warrant for his arrest. So he could have been arrested right there. The officers did not choose to arrest him or immediately put him in handcuffs, which is their right. They sit there, they, they, they deal with this dude, but the other camera angle that wasn't briefed in the, in the initial video, because obviously you're going to show the video that's going to be uh, tainted to a degree. So we show one side of the video and he should walk around the car and then go in the car reaching for something. And nobody wants to talk about that he was reaching for something. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. But what I want to say is that a person's record is of, of extreme importance when you're dealing with people on the street. I can tell you from both sides. I've been in, I've been a, a, a neighborhood kid. I've been on the on the civilian side, but I also been on the on the uh, police side, on the side of being a law enforcement officer. Okay, so what I must tell you is that he had an active warrant for his arrest going back to July seventh. He had a battery charge in twenty sixteen. Okay, uh, strangulation on his record. This is 2016. These are things that are going on over. Okay, domestic violence that he was responsible for. Skipped bail. <laughs> I'm, I'm just. I'm, I, I can keep going. You know, felony charge on his record for back in 2015, endangering the safety uh, of others with the use of a firearm while intoxicated. Go figure. Okay, evading or obstructing arrest, which is what he did again in the video. Evading or obstructing arrest. You, you got you guys, I can't spell it out any easier for you than this. I'm giving you just his record right now. Um, and I don't I don't I don't I really don't understand why people are responding the way they're responding. When you when it comes to stuff like this, when you look at the record a mile long and I'm not just making this up, I can show it to you better than I can tell you. And uh, I want to I want to tell you, like, I'm not against this fella. I mean, I hate to see that the man is gone. Or, or the man is is, is, is is injured. It shouldn't be this way. But see, these are the types of things that happen or take place when we don't, you know, follow instructions. When things, this is his arrest documentation. You can look it up yourself and figure out what it is. But this kind of stuff is what I'm talking about, man. You know, uh, we have to use some common sense here. We got to use some common sense. And I'll get to more of this story in just a bit. Uh I'm going to I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to say this is part one. I'm going to give you part two shortly. I got to come back at you and I got to give you more information based on Mr. Jacob Blake. And I need you to understand that this man was killed biblically. I'm just speaking biblically. There's a reason for this because people have to make decisions. And the law is pretty clear. The Bible is pretty, pretty clear. There are things that you must do as an individual in order to preserve life and property as an individual. So I'm going to come back more so with that information and tell you why this man suffered these injuries or suffered a shooting based on his actions. I get back at you in just a few minutes.